Okay, we have your two another integral on the board. We've got the integral from zero to one, square root four minus x squared dx. And I did this one not too far back, but there was an interesting comment we had for this one that said, bro, you can just use the formula. So I think what we can do is let's try that. But the only thing is, I can't really just use the formula because it's a video, so I need to do a little more than that. But I can derive the formula and then we can use it. So for a starting point, I'm gonna to wanna to do the indefinite integral so we can kind of see what our formula is. That way it's gonna be more versatile if you got the situation but with different bounds. And then we'll have, we'll call this a squared here. So we'll have a squared minus x squared dx. So for our problem, it's gonna be a equals two and we need to plug in later. And then from here, it's just gonna be trig substitution. There might be different ways, but let's do trig substitution. So I'm gonna do set x equal to a sine of t, then dx is gonna be a cosine t dt. And then let's get our value for, let's isolate t. So what's gonna happen when we take the inverse and we shuffle things around, we're gonna have t equal to arc sine of x over a. Go ahead and substitute. Let's see what happens. We have a squared. When we square this and plug in it, it's gonna be minus a squared sine squared t dx is all this stuff we have an a cosine t dt well if i factor a squared and then bring it out of the square root, that's going to be an a times this one we'll have a constant a squared i can bring in front of everything then what's going to be left here is going to be one minus sine squared t which we can write as cosine squared t just kind of making it clear inside the square root cosine t but this thing here, this kind of cancels and we're left with absolute value cosine t. But this is always going to be positive. It has to do with, it's because the way we define the inverse, the range of it's always going to be between minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's quadrants 4 and 1, always positive for cosine in that region. So what's going to happen, simplifying it, we've got our a squared. And then we're just integrating cosine squared t dt. But then we can reduce the power on this thing here. What's gonna happen, we're gonna have one half, one plus cosine two t, which we can integrate really quick. But I can bring this half out front like this. Go ahead and integrate. We've got our a squared two. This is gonna become t plus sine two t, but we're gonna have like a one half pop out. And then this is gonna be, well, it's gonna do plus c, but we should actually back substitute to get our formula. But before I do that, one thing we can do, see sine of 2t is a problem as we've got it in terms of just the single angle. Well, that's no problem. I can take, here we can have one half, sine 2t I can write as two sine t cos t, but then I can cancel two with the half right there. So then when we back substitute, I basically have a value for sine t, just rearranging this, we know sine t is gonna be x over a, but what about cosine of t? Well, for that, we can draw our triangle really quick, I guess, or yeah, let's just draw the triangle. So for sine t, if our sine is opposite over hypotenuse, x over a, so we can do this thing, Pythagorean theorem, what we get is a squared minus x squared for this other side, same thing we had right here. So then for cosine of t, sorry, the angle here is t, adjacent over hypotenuse, this value, we can just from this, say that this is going to be a squared minus x squared over a. So now we've got everything we need for our formula. We still have our a squared over 2 out front. t is going to be this. So we have arc sine of x over a plus, actually that's going away because we're going to be using this. So no one half. Forget that. Plug in sine and cosine. So sine is going to be x over a. Cosine is going to be this stuff, square root a squared minus x squared. Multiplying in this a, we'll write this as a squared. Add a plus c on here, and this is gonna be our formula for the integral of a squared minus x squared. So now let me just clean up the board, and we'll plug in, and we'll see if we can get a solution for this thing. Okay, one thing that occurred to me at the last second is it might be nice to just distribute this in. So we got two versions here. The second one, I distribute in the a squared just because it's gonna cancel with this one right here. So now getting back to our problem, we're going to have this, but we have a equal to 2. So when we plug, first we plug a 2 in there, we're going to have 4 over 2. So we're going to have 2 
arc sine of x over 2, then plus a squared minus x squared, that's just going to be, that's just, that's just going to become 4 minus x squared over 2. We don't want the plus c, now we're back to a definite integral, so we just need to evaluate this from 0 to 1. Well, you plug in 0, everything's 0, don't worry about that. Plug in 1, we're going to have 2. Arc sine of 1 half, that's going to happen at pi over 6, that's nice. Plug in a 1, that's just 1, we're going to have 4 minus 1, or just square root of 3 over 2. Multiply it out for my final solution, we have just pi over 3 plus square root of 3 over 2, and that's it. So there you go, pretty nice method, you can just plug into the formula, that's a good way. So that's it for today, thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.